Right. We are in the model builder. Before we start the modeling, I want to summarize all the learnings that we did before. So um, I created a little table here that shows you what are the insights that we derived from the analysis and exploration phase. For each channel, we have the delayed effect that we measured. Uh, we have some attribution da data from the multi-touch attribution. And I specifically selected one, two, and three. These three factors were multicollinear with one on each other, plus radio. But we don't have usually data about radio. So what we want to do is we want to calibrate these uh, three features that are multicollinear with multi-attribution data. So we give a direction to the model to handle this, um, this complexity and giving us giving it a sort of prior, sort of belief that we have about the business. In this way, it will be easier for the model to generate results that are consistent with what we believe. So let's go to the model builder. Let's use the advanced model builder in this case, and let's upload the data set. Awesome. Next thing we need to do is do the exact same thing that we did before with the exploration phase. So let's call it demo, actually YouTube tutorial, date column, output, output variable type, select all the medias. Well, now we don't have organic columns. We only have one context column. The context columns, I repeat myself, is includes all the features and all the variables that might have both negative and positive coefficients. You don't know yet. Are all the non-organic and media feature variable? And they can be external variable, internal variable, doesn't matter, but it's important that you select the context columns as only the columns in which they might have positive or they might have negative contribution and negative effect on your sales. We select the time frame. In this case, we have only one year of data, so I'm going to select the entire time frame. What I suggest you though, when you start modeling, the first thing that you need to understand is you need to have at least one year of data in order to model the seasonality. Second check that you need to do, try to do this uh, game. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 features, 11 features. You should have at least 10 rows per each feature, for each variable that you have in your marketing mix, which means we have a daily data set, so we have more than 365 rows. We should have at least 110 rows for this uh, model. If we had weekly data set, which each row represented as a, represented a week of the year, we sh should have had at least two years of data in order to model this market mix model. Now, this is just to give you an understanding on how to derive and how to decide the window start and window end for your own project. Let's select a country, still Italy. I want to model holiday, season, and weekday as usual. And then I want to calibrate. In the calibration, we select the feature like Performance max, select the time frame. We want to use the entire time frame and we want to give an approximation of what's uh, the effect. I'm going, we're going to select the spend during this period. We need to insert, let's go back here. I updated this table, updating actually also the spend is 288,326, 288326. We generated according to the attribution 300K. The confidence interval that we're going to insert is 0 0.75. We're going to give a confidence interval, which is how sure we are about this insight, which is a value between 0 0.7 and to 0 0.99. And um, for all attribution data, we do not give more than 0 0.8 uh, confidence because it's biased and we know it's biased. We don't want to uh, compromise the capabilities of the model to understand what's true incrementality in our market mix. So for the attribution data, we're going to use a confidence interval between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. For the incrementality test data, we're going to use between 0 0.8 and 0 0.99. It's really important to differentiate this confidence interval in terms of how accurate and how scientific is the insights that we're going um, to use in the calibration. Let's use, let's upload the other two uh, calibration real quick. Perfect. We selected all the data about the calibration in this phase. And as we can see, we inserted the spend that we had during this period between January and December 2022, 2022 uh, the lift measured and the confidence interval. Let's go and click next. Awesome. So we are halfway. We have a second step that we need to do. We need to find the best hyperparameters for ad stock and emission returns. Now, let's dive into what those are. So. First thing first, ad stock, AKA the effect over time of your marketing investments. Let's say today you invest on TV. There will be a delayed effect, a 
lag effect between when you invest and to when you see the impact in sales for upper funnel campaigns. You know, you usually invest in upper funnels, branding campaigns and offline investment just to increase your brand awareness, right? To increase the memory that your users and your, uh, and your potential customer have about you. Now, we want to translate this increasing awareness to a factor called ad stock, which measured the memory and how the memory and the conversion is handled over time coming from your marketing investments. Based on the stage of the campaign type, you're going to see different type of ad stock. These are the three uh, type of ad stock that you can see. So the first one is performance com campaign types that had have the same impact in the same day in which you invest. You're going to see 100% of the impact is in the same day in which you invest. And then there is some lagged effects, in this case for 20 and days. There is second stage in which there is some delayed effect. So there is some effect in the same day you invest, but most of it is delayed. In this case, for example, it's seven days delayed deletion. And at the end, we can have zero effect in the same day in which you invest. This happens usually for offline investments in which we invest, for example, on TV or out of home. In the same day in which we invest, it's really difficult to see the lift, but the lift is seen after some days completely. And then comes off and disappears completely after 36 days, for example. In this graph, we want to give, we want to actually approximate what would be the effect over time of a particular campaign type. You can use shape and scale to model and change this curve. If you have shape under one, it would mean that all the impact, 100% of the impact would be shown the same day, and then there will be some halo effect. If you have shape higher than one, but lower than two, you're going to see the lead effect, but in the same day, you're going to see some effect. So in this case, 60% is going to be shown in the same day of the contribution sales. So you invest and you're going to see a lift, but most of the lift is going to appear after six days. And then you have the last stage in which shape higher than two, you will see zero effect in the same day you invest. All the effect is going to be delayed. It's really difficult to have this for universities or companies that have long uh, customer journey. It's way plausible for most of e-commerce businesses, for example, or mobile apps, it's not really common. So you should have it always high, lower than one. While you have skill that represents the halo effect. So for a how long these effects continues over time. It's not uh, having lag, lagging effect, it, it, having halo effect. For how long does the memory of your users still remember you? And then on the other hand, we have a, uh, Diminishing returns. Diminishing returns measure the marginal utility of investing more money into the same channel. And they allow you to understand if, whether we are overspending or underspending inside of a particular channel. And with alpha, you measure the, the, the first part of the curve. So if you have a really big alpha, higher than two, for example, you're going to have some, you're going to see some exponential effect, which means that the lower, the more you invest, the more the response is going to increase almost exponential. And then it saturates around this point with gamma. And if you have around one, really close to one, it's going to be, have a linear um, behavior if you increase your marketing investments. While if you reduce it, it's going to be, you're going you're gonna to see a big plateau effect, which mostly, if, uh, as you can see here, it, does, it seems like uh, even if we increase the budget, the revenue is not going to increase at any level. No. In order to run each, you should do in a normal and traditional marketing mix modeling project, you should change these other parameters manually. But with Cassandra, we simplified this part. Uh, you can click this button. It's going to use our own algorithm to find the best combination of other parameters for ad stock and diminishing return for each campaign type that we have in our marketing mix. So let's wait. It usually takes 30 seconds in order to be run in here. Awesome. We found the optimal other parameters. Let's see what they look like. Awesome. We have our curves created. As you can see, each curve behaves differently because we found the optimal other parameters per each campaign type. But what we want to do is we want to force them. Usually when you uh, start doing some this modeling, you need to force some beliefs inside of this model. We want to force some ad stock beliefs inside of this model too. So let's go. We have display that has two days delayed effect. TV has at least three, so we go here. And we want to have a shape 
higher than 1.3 and a scale of 0.27, it should have three days delayed effect. Then we have Facebook conversions. Facebook conversions, we said it's three days delayed effect. So we go here, we increase it 1.30, 1.4. Let's check it. All right, this is two days. Let's increase it 1.5. All right, we have three days delayed effect and the effect of Facebook is going to disappear in 24 days after the day in which you invested. So let's continue with Facebook adders. Facebook adders, I remember, had zero lag effect. So it makes sense. Facebook product catalog sales. So first thing first that I see is, is diminishing returns doesn't make sense. It doesn't have plateau effect. So I'm going to reduce alt gamma because I want to see the plateau effect. I'm going to decrease also alpha. All right. This for me makes way more sense than the previous value because there was a linear relationship before between revenue and sales. If you get revenue and budget invested, if you continued investing more money into the same channel, but I want to see some plateau effect. Now, keep in mind that all these other parameters that we are inserting right now are just an indication to the model. What we do technically is we're going to select the other parameters, but then we're going to give them uh, freedom of moving around while they're training. It's going to use a machine learning algorithm to find actually the optimal value of each other parameters that we're selecting with a constraint that, there all, that is always with a constraint that is always 20% upper and 20% lower around the value that we selected. So if it's not super precise, doesn't matter. The machine learning algorithm is going to find the optimal value. But if you're really, really sure that that value is the correct one, you should decrease the per percentage variation to 5%, 5% upper and 5% lower. So you're going to force the model to not go above or beyond uh, this, that number too much. In this case, we're going to use 20 because it's, it's good. So Facebook product sales makes sense. Performance max, it, uh, it does have the impact in the same day, but I don't believe that this is the right upper parameter. Maybe alpha is too much. Two is really, really big. This shape makes way more sense to me. And we have Google search brand. Google search brand, zero effect, makes sense. And Google search has a really big plateau effect in here. So we want, I want to force some alpha and gamma. Google search not brand, that's it. Three days delayed effect. So we need to force the model here. Let's increase scale. This nine days is too much. Four days or three days delayed effect. Awesome. Influencers. Actually, that makes sense. I want to just check whether there is three days delayed effect. So, all right, three days delayed effect, maybe a little more scale because I believe that influencers actually increase the awareness overall of the brand and they have a longer halo effect compared to other channels. Magazine, it has the impact in the same day, weirdly, in this case. No, it's one day delayed effect with, right, let's do this, three scale a little bit. Then there is radio, which has... Delayed if there is no delayed effect, but uh, we want to decrease the alpha and gamma because we don't want the linear behavior. And that's it. So as we said, as we mentioned, we click in this phase, we optimize other parameters, and then we force the shape, scale, gamma, and alpha to be similar to what we believe the campaign type behaves. We want to force them. Usually you need to force some ad stock and the diminishing returns, they're really easy to, to understand and to model, but sometimes you need to model also a change other parameters for the diminishing returns. You ch you click optimize other parameters. You change the, the other parameters here, you're forcing them, and then you select the ideal variance. If you're really sure, you put 5% variance around this number. If you're not sure, you keep 20. Keeping 20, overall, it's a best practice. Let's click next to continue to the last step. Awesome. So we're ready. We are ready to train our model. Our model uses Robin's Facebook Robin algorithm to train our model. Um, so we click train model. It's going to search for a cloud instance to train our marketing mix modeling. And then in one hour or two, it's going to be ready. So the last thing that we need to do is wait a little, select start training, and we're done. Awesome. Cassandra is ready to start the training. Be careful. If you start the training, you won't be able to stop it until completion. So we click yes, train my model and the model is going to start. Here we have the output. It's the training has started. We click OK. All right. Awesome. I want to check the status of this training. Quick check status running trial first of six, 1% training done. All right. We just need to wait now. Let's see you in the other side. 
uh, after the training and we're going to analyze the output and decide whether we need to do a new training and iterate on the marketing mix model we created or go straight to reading the insights. Right. Too soon. 